I'm Harry and I'm doing an interview for Moodybook. So I've been sent some questions. So I haven't opened these. Um, I've just had a look at the ones, my little one. So he's written some answers for those on the back. So I'll show you those later. But I haven't looked at the ones for me. So let's have a look. Okay. So introduce yourself to our viewers. Tell us about your family, pets, work and why I decided to become a midwife. So my name's Harry and um, I live in North Wales in the UK and um, in a small town with my other half Phil and our nine-year-old son Miles. Um, me and Phil have been together for 12 and a half years, so a really long time. Um, I'm 30 years old now, which is depressing. Um, but it's fine, we'll smash it, it's all right. Um, I have two dogs, so they're both miniature dash hounds, and one's boy and one's girl, and the boy is four years old and he's called Hamilton, and the girl has just turned one and she's called Abernathy. Why I decided to become a midwife, um, I get the asses all the time, so I don't have like a definite answer, I just felt like it was something I wanted to do because I like to support women. I think women get a pretty raw deal. I think we get a lot of rubbish. So I think it's nice to be able to support women um, as a job. So yeah, that's why I decided to do it, just to empower the girls amongst us. Because that's pretty cool, right? So yeah, let's see what the next question is. So what is it like to be a midwife? Um, it's not for the faint-hearted, it's uh, not a clean job, there's blood and puke and poo and wee and yeah, there's all that. So it's not for people who are a little bit squeamish, which I'm not, which is handy. Um, it's busy, it's chaotic, but it's super rewarding. So yeah, you get to bring life into the world time which is really awesome um, and see women being amazingly powerful so that's really good and I work with loads of women uh, and they're awesome too so yeah that's it, it's really good I love it but yeah definitely not for the faint-hearted not for people who are a little bit prudish Um, yeah I sew vaginas up and I deliver placentas and I deal with emergencies so yeah but I love all that like I thrive off that so which is handy I suppose so yeah let's see what the next question is so what is the most beautiful and the most difficult thing about being a midwife okay so the most beautiful thing is that you get to bring life into the world so regardless of how shit everything else might seem like there's babies being born and it makes people happy and makes families really happy and um, so that's really nice yeah that's the most beautiful thing and just yeah seeing how awesome women can be when they put their minds to it um what is the most difficult thing about being a midwife it's not always happy uh, we have really sad times um but i think we get through that because we got like awesome colleagues who we support each other during those like really hard times um so yeah that's the most difficult thing um and then like a smaller bit is that it's really emotionally demanding all the time happy or sad it takes a lot of emotions to deal with but yeah again you've got like the support of your colleagues and my other half's great like i'll come home and talk to him if i've had a bad day and um, the same with my friends. So yeah, like it's good, but yeah, busy and not always happy. So yeah, let's see what's next. Okay, so what is your most interesting birth story? So um, I don't have one. So I've delivered like over 300 babies now. So I couldn't pick one that is most interesting. I can, I've got really memorable ones um, for people who've been trying for babies for a very long time or, you know, things like that. But my most interesting ones are the ones where 
women don't expect to do well and they surprise themselves. I think that's amazing. Um, never, they just don't think they can do it and then all of a sudden they do and like, yeah, the joy on their face after they've done it, they've made this human and pushed it out. So that's pretty cool. Like all of those ones where the women are surprised. Like I love those, there it is. Okay, so how to prepare for giving birth? What are the most important things expecting to should know? So, oh, how to prepare? I don't think there's a way to prepare. I think that you've just got to go with the flow. That's the best preparation. The best preparation is no preparation. You can't be prepared, especially when it's your first. I think having good support and realising that you can do it, you're totally capable of doing it, you can deal with it, um, and having an open mind about what's going to happen because things don't always go to plan but that doesn't mean it's bad i think having yeah positive outlook on it is really important so yeah that's the way i'd prepare yeah the most important things expectant mothers should know um you'd be tired <laughs> and it's loads harder than you think but it's really rewarding and it is however cliche to say it's totally worth it so yeah it says me with one child but just one's fine <laughs> so yeah let's see what the next question is is there a best way to give birth what do you think about home birth and what about a c-section okay so there's no best way uh, i think a healthy baby and a healthy mum is the best way so however that happens is great uh home birth so yeah home birth's awesome we have quite a few in our area um, and I think it's really nice for the women and their families to be able to deliver in the home and go to bed in your own bed and like use your own toilet and your own shower. So yeah, home birth's amazing. Um, we just don't have the facilities to deal with everybody having a home birth. Um, like not enough staff, that sort of thing. But it's, it's great. It would be lovely if we, if we could have more. Um, and there's other countries that have loads, so like Holland, I know they primarily have home births. Um, so yeah, uh, C-sections, okay. There's a time and a place for a C-section. It's not an easy way out, but sometimes it's the best choice for that woman, like given all of the circumstances. Um, but they're hard, like I think when I've, I've seen so many now that they're brutal when they do them. Uh, I have a C-section, um, not out of choice, emergency. So yeah, I did the labour bit and then had the C-section as an emergency. So I suppose I've had a little bit of both really, which is kind of handy uh, when you're supporting women. Um, but yeah, I think people can see it as the easy way out. It's not, you feel like you've been run over by a truck. It's really hard. You can't drive six weeks. There's so many things that come along with it. And it's a major operation. Um, and the babies tend to be more unsettled and things because that's not a natural way to be born. Um, but I do think they have their time and their place. And definitely sometimes it's a safer option for delivery. Uh, so yeah, I think just as long as, as long as it's safe, that's the best way basically and as long as that's what women have chosen so yeah let's have a look at what the next question is so what is the most important thing to remember in the first hours after birth okay the most important thing um i don't know really i think the most important thing to remember is that this is it now you just enjoy it just enjoy these like first couple of hours because you did go so fast and you never get that couple of hours back so just just relax just enjoy the fact that you've got this new baby and that you made it so yeah there then that's the most important thing relax and enjoy it let's have a look so who is usually present at birth partner mother friend um what are my thoughts about it and is it okay for older siblings to assist at the birth of their younger siblings okay so two questions so yeah. So who's usually present? Normally partners, sometimes the woman's mother, 
But I think that's tricky because I think it's hard to watch your daughter in that much pain. You can't do anything about it. Um, or friends. Yeah, friends can, or like sisters. It's normally the partner and another woman who's had a baby before. I think that tends to be the most like common birth partner. Um, I think it's great. I think people need as much support as they want. Um, so yeah, whatever, whoever gets you through it, if you just want the two of you, that's cool. If not, then, you know, you want everyone there, then <laughs> okay, that's fine. Everyone can see you poo. So yeah, um, siblings assisting. Okay, so a friend of mine, fellow midwife, just had a home birth and her youngest son cut the cord. So I thought it was really cool. Uh, I think if your kid is prepared enough, that's awesome. Um, and you've got a good outlook and you're calm and you know the way you're going to labour, I think, yeah, if you've got a positive outlook and you're nice and calm, then it's good. What I wouldn't think is like, you wouldn't want it to be traumatic for your child because that's their mum trying to get a human out of them. So yeah, as long as you didn't think it was traumatic, then yeah, whatever works, whatever gets you through. Let's see. Okay, so how to deal with a pre-birth stress and how to help a mother feel less nervous about it. Okay, uh, pre-birth stress. So, yeah, it's stressful. It's dead scary. In fact, it's terrifying when you do it for the first time. And I think sometimes more terrifying when you do it for the second time because you know what's coming. <laughs> so, again, being calm, being prepared, doing all of the little things that you can do to make it a little bit easier. Um, having your favourite things there, putting on your favourite music, like making sure you look after yourself and that you've got loads of support is the best way to deal with pre-birth stress. And being really informed, so talking to your midwife. Um, so like we, th there's no stupid questions, um, unless you ask where it comes out, that's pretty daft. But otherwise, no stupid questions, like everybody's got to do it once, so you know, it's fine. Um, ask loads of questions. Um, I don't think you can help people feel less nervous about it. I think that you can help women feel more prepared. So yeah, by being really inquisitive, you're more prepared because you have the answers to more things that might happen. So I think that will help with any nerves because you feel like you're under control a little bit. So yeah, let's see. So do people often have birth photographers and how to choose the best one? What do I think about this trend? So uh, people do, they tend to have them at home births more because it's easier. There's loads of rules and regulations about having a birth photographer in the hospital. Um, because we've got a national health service. So it's not as easy in that way as like private healthcare. We've got rules about who comes in and you know whether or not they've been like police checked and they're safe to be there and oh, all that sort of stuff and as well because like not all midwives want to be photographed doing their job so I think that's got to be a consideration Um I think it's cool I think that if that's what you want then awesome I it it's nice I think that more people see real birth instead of that weird like Hollywood like oh look there it is push push like that like cause it's just not accurate so I think it's important to document reality in that way and um, again it helps people be more prepared and it's a positive thing it's a bit scary looking and it's a bit gross but you know that's the way we make babies so that's fine isn't it so yeah I think it's a cool trend if that's what you're into um, it wouldn't be for me, <laughs> but maybe I've seen too much. <laughs> so yeah, what's next? Okay, so what do you think about the obsession of photographing every single moment of, of life? Do you take a lot of pictures of your family? Okay, um, I think it's, I think it's good in one way. I think it's nice to be able to document a lot of things, but I think that sometimes we can forget to enjoy the moment because we're conscious of taking pictures or trying to document it or put it on Instagram or Snapchat or whatever your bag is. So yeah, I think it's good, but I think it's really important that there's a balance between enjoying the moment 
and enjoying your life and not letting it take over. So yeah. Uh, do I take a lot, a lot of pictures of my family? Yeah, I do. Um, both of my boys are really shy. So my other half, Phil, is like rarely seen in a photograph because he's not just hates having his photograph taken. <laughs> so I normally get candid ones of him, cheeky little sneaky ones. Um, and Miles is at a weird age. So normally he'll go, let's take a picture. And he'll go, I'm like, it's just a hideous face. I'm like, no, just be normal. <laughs> so I do take a lot of pictures, but they're mostly candid pictures of the boys. Um, the dogs are pretty good at being <laughs> photographed because they will stay still for treats. So unfortunately, I can't do that with the humans. So <laughs> if only. Okay, so do you prefer paper or digital photos? I prefer paper. Uh, I think that Digital's great, but I like albums. I remember sitting at home with my parents when I was little and looking through photo albums of their lives and their families and pictures of me when I was a baby and all that sort of thing. I think those are cool things to have. So digital is fab because I can take like 20 pictures and choose the best one. But that's where I think the greatness of it stops. I think that it would be a shame to lose the ability to print pictures. Which is why I'm only book a great because I can fill up my albums. So yeah. What's next? So what new product would you like to see in our offer? There we are. So uh, I don't know. I I think that everything that Mooney Book does is great. I I don't think don't fix what isn't broken. Like it's all good. So I don't have any ideas and also. Unless it's a vagina, I am no expert. <laughs> so yeah, I think that all of the like the vintage pictures and the little squares and stuff like they're really cool and the little books that you can tear the pages out of, everything's great. So yeah, don't fix what isn't broken. Just like do that really well. Okay, uh, if you could design a new cover of the Mooney book, what would it be? Okay, uh, if. I could design a new cover. Uh, sausage dogs? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I only have two great loves in life. Sausage dogs and midwifery. So, um, boobs, female bodies. Like, yeah, the difference and the fact that we're all like weird and wonderful shapes. That's pretty cool. So, yeah, maybe a mix between the two, but maybe that would be weird <laughs> for anyone other than me. So, yeah, something either with like awesome women or loads of sausage dogs because they're weird shape and they have tiny little pointless legs. So yeah, that would be my preference. Okay. Okay, so how do you cope with the difficulties of motherhood? Um, I think it's all about time, isn't it? That's what everybody lacks. Time. Time to do everything you want to do and like spend time with family and all that sort of thing. So um, I try and make time for Miles and me because it can be monotonous, can't it? Life, it's dull sometimes. So I try and make time to do nice things um, and then I make time for myself. So I have loads of baths. Um, three hour long bath is like my ideal way to relax. Um, um, I see my friends and stuff, so like, yeah, I've still got like my own identity. I think it's important as a mum not to just be a mum. So yeah, just still be you. And as a couple as well, so we have quite a strict routine with regards to bedtime with Miles. Always have done, ever since he was little, because then we get time together. So I think that's part of the secret of our 12-year relationship, <laughs> um, that and primarily does what I ask <laughs> but yeah like having time for each other and making time for yourself and for your partner to make time for their themselves so yeah like making sure that it's not just being a mum all the time however awesome motherhood is it's exhausting okay so what are the best things about being a mum and um, they're hilarious so Miles is very funny he makes me laugh constantly um, 
just because he's weird um but i love that so yeah that that's the best thing i think that and that like yeah then he like likes to ask lots of questions and i like to answer the questions like i find that like interaction bit lovely and um, yeah you get free cuddles all the time so you know couldn't pass up free cuddles and i've got two sausage dogs and like normally covered in cuddles which is ace i think i couldn't think of a better way to go through life other than covered in cuddles so yeah okay what is the best thing about my kid so well i've just explained really he's weird which i love um he just he just does the most bizarre things you'll ask him to get ready to go out and he'll come downstairs in a spider-man outfit i'm like yeah, you can't wear that to the shop <laughs> um like that sort of stuff like yeah just he's a bit crackers because we're all a bit mad right it'd be boring if you weren't so yeah the fact that he's weird and really loving and really really chatty um but shy yeah it's a weird combination but yeah he's he's great i really like him so i think that's all of mine and then there was two questions for miles so as i said he's a bit shy so i asked him these and he's written on the back so <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, what is the best thing about your mum? So, ask him that. Uh, and he wrote, uh, cheese toasties, obviously, because cheese toasties are life, right? Um, and cuddles. See, cuddles, honestly. It's, a, it's an absolute sellable point for children. So, cheese toasties and cuddles. I'll take that. Can I put it on my CV? Like, that's, they're the two things I'm great at. Cheese toasties and cuddles. <laughs> Uh, and then what do you think about our Mooney book we sent you? So he's, he's written, I love it. <laughs> you trying. Um, he does love it because he likes to be able to put the pictures in the albums with me. It's like one of our little things that we do together. So I think he likes it because the minute it pops through the door, he's like, yes, we get to do cutting and sticking and putting in albums. So yeah, I think... I think that's why he loves it so much because it's just extra time to do nice things with mum. So yeah, there were my questions. That was fun. Thank you so much for having me. I hope it wasn't dull and I hope that I answered all of your midwifery based questions. Um, yeah, vagina expert. That maybe, maybe I should have that on my CV. That should be it. So yeah, thank you so much for having me. Bye.